I just felt like the most most unlucky person on the face of the earth and, and the, it was like the rug was pulled under my feet and I just didn't know what had hit me, how it hit me and um, it was hard to digest. My name is Anju Sarna and I'm 44 years old. I was diagnosed with ovarian cancer last March. Despite having a complete prophylactic hysterectomy, I was diagnosed with this disease. And I was told that this is a peritoneal cancer, which is treated exactly like an ovarian cancer. I went through a surgery last year and based on the surgery, he suggested aggressive chemo as soon as possible. So within two days of coming out of the hospital, I was going for my first chemotherapy treatment to Princess Margaret. My mother uh, was uh, diagnosed with ovarian cancer when she was 38 and um, she passed away with ovarian cancer and after her, two of her sisters were diagnosed uh, in, in their 40s with the same ovarian cancer and they passed away with this disease as well. So after my first child, I uh, was very concerned about the family history and I wanted to keep on top of my genes and take all precautions so that I don't experience or go through that disease. So from the very beginning, it, it's been in my mind that it's genetic and I have a strong family history. I um, needed the time to uh, grasp what had happened because everything happened so quickly from, from me going to the doctor for a, or a physical or just the fluid building up to the surgery to being diagnosed with ovarian cancer um, to uh, getting through chemo. Um, it was just too much, too soon happened um, in my case so I had no time to even just accept the, the disease or, or to uh, get the courage to fight it because um, it was just one thing after the other. So I took the time to just mentally accept the disease and tell myself that I am strong and I can fight it even though whatever has happened with my mother or, or the family history, I am not going to let that interfere with me fighting this disease and staying positive. I have a cousin who's fighting ovarian cancer in India and knock on wood, she's doing well for the past five years. So that's what keeps me going. If she can do it, I can do it too. It gives me hope. I didn't want to know anything about my cancer, what kind pathology report, even though um, I have family who are in the medical field and they wanted me to find out more. I don't want to know about it. I want to know how I can keep it under control with my diet, exercise, yoga, uh, supplements that I can take that keep cancer cells down. I'm doing it for my family as well because apparently the boys are also prone to uh, genetic cancer. So this is something I found out. So I'm trying to make the changes in our lives. My grocery bill has gone through the roof. <laughs> my husband's complaining. Um, because I'm making him buy, you know, broccoli, avocado, and watercress, and whatever I think is good for fighting um, cancer in, in, in our bodies, I'm doing that. While I was going through chemotherapy, I was only dealing with myself. So my world was a little bit more narrower. As you get better, and better, there are other things that start falling on your plate as well. So coping with them, it is very challenging because you don't realize that you wipe out your past to deal with the present. And adding back things in your life takes a toll on you mentally because there's just so much information that's coming into you. I find that I, I'm sometimes thinking something and I know I am supposed to tell my kids or my husband something and he'll tell me, remind me to do this. And I have to turn around and tell him, you have to remind me to remind you because I can't remember myself if I've eaten lunch today. 
Um, you just, it's, it's a very, very um, strange feeling because you, you're talking and you just forget what you were talking about. So I had read about um, brain fog and I'm experiencing brain fog. It's not a good feeling at all. Every day I tell myself that I have to do a little bit extra more so that I am, I'm getting back to my normal life that it used to be. I don't like to be sick. I don't like the feeling of being depending on others. So I have to do this for myself. Just going back to work is probably the hardest decision one has to make. Uh, because you have to be ready mentally as well as physically. And the physical strength comes in due course of time. With the mental strength, you need to get yourself, your thoughts together and just tell yourself that you've got to do one more step, which is going closer to your normal life again, which is, I was working full time before. So just one day at a time, one little step at a time, um, Get closer to it. it. It's a lot of healing that needs to happen inside and emotionally as well as mentally because you may look okay. You 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 know you have your hair, you have makeup on, you you look like anybody who's walking uh, outside a healthy normal person, but you know in, inside you that um, you need to heal. I was very, very upset. I was angry at God, <laughs> believe it or not. Um, it was hard for me to, uh, to even uh, imagine that, you know, I've always been a religious person. I've always done good things. I don't believe in hurting other people. Why did it happen to me? Uh, you know, why that answer, nobody could answer, give me that answer to my why. But I was told by, somebody who came into my life and showed me that you don't ask God why because there's something that's coming good out of a sickness or an illness or anything that negative happens in your life there's always a, a plan so I, um, I stopped asking why I don't want to know anymore because nobody can give you that answer I'm just focusing on how I can help others deal with this in a positive way. Um, the anger has gone. Now I have peace in my heart and I think that's very important to get that peace. You just let go of the angry feeling or you know being so mad or upset and, and then you just experience this calmness that comes over you which gives you strength and like strength is the only thing that I think helps you keep grounded and deal with uh, this disease. I want to do everything that uh, you want to experience and I don't want fear to hold me back because you know you don't want to try this you don't want to try that um, if 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 my boys go skiing I want to go skiing with them I want to um, you know go for a walk every day enjoy everything in the cold weather which I never used to go just trying different things um, you know, going to Wellsprings, being in a, a peer support for somebody that is the courage that I'm getting now because I'm afflicted with this disease. Uh, the interview, this is, this is a huge step, just dealing with your feelings um, and healing yourself inside. And there's an endless thing, there's an endless list of things that I want to do um, in life. And, and this has made me just realize you've got to do it. Don't wait for tomorrow, just do it and enjoy it.